Hello, everyone. Welcome to join my talk today. Uh, I'm Fei Fisher Xu from Huawei Cloud. And today, uh, I will talk about uh, KubeEdge, how KubeEdge uh, extending the Kubernetes to the edge with the real world industry use cases. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a brief introduction of myself. Uh, now, I'm a technical steering committee of the KubeEdge project. Yes, I'm also. Uh, senior software from Huawei Cloud. Yeah, this is my uh, GitHub ID. Uh, you can find me at the GitHub. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, this is some background I want to introduce for the uh, edge computing. Yeah. Uh, uh, from the uh, background, you can see from the uh, right side to the left side, it it is uh, the closed service. Regional age, at the city age, at the near side age. Yes, you can see in the uh, closed services, we always do some AR training, the big data processing, and other, uh, other, other stuff. And then the regional age, at the city age. Yeah, in this age, we have do some uh, VCDN and the VR AR processing, yeah, and the others. Yeah, the uh, left side is the uh, Near side edge, yes, you can see now more and more data is generated at the edge, yes. So, how to manage this edge devices and the processing the edge data has become more and more important these days, yeah. So, this is the background. Yeah, the next one is the Kube Edge project. Uh, first, I will have a brief introduction of the Kube project, yeah. Kube Edge project is uh, open sourced in GitHub, yes, we are the uh, first cloud native edge computing open source project. Yeah, we have some uh, open governance and we connecting the cloud native and edge computing ecosystem. Yes, we have many uh, stars at Fox or GitHub. Yes, we also have many contributors from uh, several organizations. Yeah, uh, this is some background of the Kubeage project. Okay, next is the innovation journey of the uh, Kubeage project. Yeah, first you can see uh, we are open sourced at 2018. Yes, in uh, 2018, we contributed to the CNCF at the Setbox project. Yeah, uh, at the same year, we released uh, we, uh, one of their uh, version. Yes, in uh, 2020, uh, we have many um, uh, use cases. Also, in this year, uh, we become the CNCF Ecovision project. Yeah, uh, in the 2021 years, uh, we released many uh, sub projects uh, like the Sedna for edge AI and edge mesh for the edge networking. Yeah, we uh, always have some large scale use cases in this year, like the cloud native vehicle and the cloud native satellite. Yeah, I will introduce later. Yes. In the next year, uh, we always released some uh, new features. Yes, now we are uh, applying to become the uh, CNCF project, yeah, Grad graduation project. Okay, uh, this is uh, some uh, project journey of the Kubernetes project. Okay, uh, next I will introduce some uh, project updates. Okay, uh, first this is the Kubernetes architecture. Yeah, I will uh, have a uh, 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 introduce some brief uh, detail of the architecture. Yeah, uh, frame architecture. You can see, uh, Cube Edge is built based on the Kubernetes. Yeah, it is uh, include the three parts: the cloud, edge, and the devices. Yeah. Many people ask me, uh, what's the difference between Cube Edge and the Kubernetes? Yeah. Uh, you can see Kubernetes is built based on the uh, Kubernetes. In the cloud side, you can see uh, we use the uh, Kubernetes master. So users can use the uh, Kubernetes API to talk with the uh, Kubernetes cluster. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, the uh, cloud side. Uh, also, the control plane. Uh, you can uh, deploy the uh, control plane in the uh, public cloud or in your uh, data center. It's all fine. Yeah. Another part is below is the edge part. Yes, edge part we uh, ca can call it edge node. You can uh, deploy the edge edge node uh, out of the uh, data center, uh, like some edge node located in uh, different places. Yeah, this is the edge part. Edge part actually include two parts. The left part is we call it uh, 
uh, light cube led. Uh, yeah, what means light cube led? Uh, we do some lightweight cutting uh, based on the uh, cube led. Yes, another part is for the uh, IoT device management. Yeah, this is the uh, uh, H core, H node. Yeah, the, uh, another component I need to introduce is cloud core. Yes, maybe you uh, will ask me why we need the uh, cloud core components. Yeah, because we think the uh, network uh, between the cloud and edge is always unstable. Yeah, the, the network may be uh, disconnect, reconnect, and have high latency. Yeah, because we think the edge node is always located in many places at out of the data center. So we have do some enhancements uh, between the uh, cloud and edge. Uh, for the network issue, so uh, we built the uh, cloud uh, cloud core components. Yeah, uh, you can see we use the uh, web socket at a quick protocol between the cloud and edge. Uh, yeah, this connection can ensure the data can uh, send from the cloud to edge reliable. Yeah, the edge core uh, can also uh, report the uh, port status and uh, some other uh, IoT devices uh, status. Uh, from this connection to the uh, cloud. Yeah. Uh, this is the overview of the Kubernetes architecture. Yeah. In summary, uh, Kubernetes is built based on the Kubernetes. Yes, it's not a Kubernetes uh, distribution. Yeah. We have do a lot of uh, enhancements, uh, key features uh, in the Kubernetes. Yeah. It can focus or uh, manage the uh, remote edge from the uh, central plan in the center or from the public cloud. Okay, uh, this is the uh, overall architecture of Kubernetes. Okay, uh, this page is uh, what is the processing flow of deploying pod uh, from the uh, cloud side to the edge. Yes, from left left side you can see it's it's a, a native Kubernetes master. We used API server, etcd. Uh, users can uh, create a pod from API server, then your scheduler to schedule pod to the edge node. Yes, we do is do is, uh, is the cloud call. You can see then send the pod from the cloud call to edge call. Then edge call can run the uh, uh, pod in the uh, edge node. Yeah, this is a, a workflow for deploying pod to edge node. Okay. Next part is about the uh, IoT device management. You can see uh, from the cloud to edge, yeah, we uh, uh, build a framework to manage the uh, IoT devices. Yeah, you can see from the uh, overall architecture. Yeah, the right side is the uh, IoT devices. It can connect to the edge node. Yeah, actually, we build some APIs. API is based on the uh, Kubernetes CRD from cloud. You can use this Kubernetes API to control the uh, edge devices connected to the uh, edge node. Yeah. Then we also build some uh, config rules from the cloud. You can use this rules to control uh, where the data generated by the edge devices to published. Uh, you can uh, control the edge devices publish the data to uh, like MQTT broker or push to the uh, database or push to other applications. Yeah. This is how we uh, manage the IoT devices. Okay, this page is a detailed architecture of the, this framework. You can see uh, the uh, uh, above is the uh, uh, Kubernetes master. Yes, the below is in each node. Uh, we build a uh, Build a module called Mapper. Yes, Mapper is deployed as a container. Yes, it act as a driver between the devices at the uh, edge node. Yes, the edge devices can use this driver to connect to the edge node. Yeah, we do a lot of things in the Mapper container, like uh, do some uh, data processing. I will uh, introduce later. Yeah, we also introduce an interface uh, called. Uh, device management interface in the edge core uh, for the IoT uh, devices management. Yeah. Okay, uh, this page is the uh, detailed design uh, in a mapper. Yeah, mapper container. Uh, you can see in a mapper we have the uh, API line and the control play line and data play line and the device driver. Yeah. So. 
sorry. Yeah, so if you, uh, you have some devices with your own protocols, uh, you can deploy, uh, you can um, develop a mapper. Yes, this mapper application can uh, connect your own uh, edge devices to the edge node. Uh, you only need to uh, write some code in a uh, device driver layer. Yes, then your uh, devices can uh, connect to the edge node. The uh, API and the control plane and data plane is all uh, done in uh, QBH. Yeah, uh, this is how uh, Mapper to process the data in ma uh, Mapper. You can see, uh, uh, you can see after the data is uh, sent uh, by the driver to the uh, data plan, the data plan will do something like the uh, data analysis and the pro provide the push capability. We can push to uh, a database and push to other uh, applications, yes. We also can push to database as listed right side. Yes, we can also provide some REST for API, so users can use this API to pull the uh, data from the edge devices, so yeah. So KubeH only uh, uh, collect the data from the devices. It will do. It will not do. Don't do other uh, processing. So you, if you want to do uh, more processing, you need to do in your own uh, application. Okay. The next one is about the uh, edge node architecture. Yeah. Uh, from the uh, the left side is the uh, overall architecture of the edge node. You can see uh, the about is the cloud, uh, is the control plane. Yes, we will uh, send the uh, pod or IoT metadata from cloud to edge. Uh, in the edge node, uh, we have a module called edge hub. It will receive the uh, metadata and then uh, it will uh, save the metadata to the uh, edge database, then send to the uh, light kubelet to run the uh, container in the uh, edge node. Yeah. You may ask why we uh, save the metadata in the edge node. Yes, because we think uh, in edge devices, the network between cloud and edge always disconnect, maybe disconnect for a long time. So in scenarios, if the edge node get offline, then uh, do some like restart, then the uh, application need to uh, recover it. Yeah. So we, uh, uh, save the metadata to the uh, database in edge node. So when the uh, edge node get offline and uh, uh, have some restart, the uh, edge core can load the metadata from the edge database uh, to recover the uh, edge, edge application yeah, in edge node. So we can ensure the uh, application run in the edge node uh, more stable. Okay, uh, this is the over architecture of the uh, edge node. Yeah, the right side is uh, some, uh, we do the uh, lightweight cutting based on the kubelet. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we fork uh, the Kubernetes in kubeh organization and do some lightweight cutting. And then we replace the uh, Kubernetes uh, in kubeh repo with our own Kubernetes. Yeah. Uh, this is the uh, overall architecture of the uh, node. Okay, uh, another sub-project I will introduce is HMesh. Yes, HMesh is a networking solution uh, in KubeH. Yeah, you, you may be asking me why, why, you, uh, why we need the uh, HMesh, uh, HMesh sub-project. Sub uh, uh, because we think uh, some other uh, uh, components like the Kubeproxy or uh, some other CNI plugin uh, always more, uh, uh, more big for the edge node. Yes, so we do a, a lightweight uh, network solutions, yeah. Uh, the left side is some um, uh, key features of the uh, edge mesh, like built-in edge local DNS and uh, service discovery and access experience also support layer 4 and layer 7 traffic management, yeah. At the multi-edge, at the cross subnet cross subnet communication. Yes, cross subnet is a very interesting uh, topic because uh, in edge scenarios, the edge node may be locate, located in uh, one place, another place, and the edge node can't access to each other. 
Yeah. In data center, all the uh, server can connect to each other, but in uh, edge, it's not. So we need to, some users want to, uh, the application running different edge nodes to access to each other. So we have done some work in the uh, edge mesh. They can uh, go to the cloud and to another edge node. Yeah, this is some work of the uh, edge mesh project. Okay, next one is another uh, uh, sub project called Sedna. Yeah, Sedna is uh, focused on the edge AI. Yeah, you can see from the architecture. Sedna is built based on the KubeH project. It can do some, uh, at least here, it do some cloud edge joint training at the inference, and some multi edge joint inference. It, it also can integrate with uh, other AI uh, frameworks. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to use this framework, maybe uh, the Sedna has some uh, a plugin. You, you need to integrate the plugin to your. Uh, AI applications to do some uh, cloud edge synergy, edge to edge synergy for, for some uh, model uh, transmission and so on. Yeah. This is a uh, uh, set NASA project. Okay, next is security. We have to do uh, uh, something like the uh, audit review. Yes, we have some audit report you can see here. Yeah. Yeah, next day, we could be also one of the first things that project integrated with the fuzzing test. Yeah, this is a fuzzing uh, test report. Okay, next, we also have done the uh, thread module and the security protection analysis. This is the report uh, of the QBH. Okay, this one is the CVE process flow of the page. Yes, when users uh, report a, a bug or a CVE, uh, our security team will deal with it and then uh, release a patch to our restricted disclosure vendor and then to uh, public to the public. Yeah, this is the CVE process. Okay, another uh, sub project I want to introduce is from our SIG Robotics. It's called Kubrob. Uh, it's uh, focused on the uh, robotics management. Yes, from the left side, you can see this is the uh, uh, architecture of this uh, Kubrob project. Uh, you can see it can manage the uh, robotics from the cloud. Yes, from the cloud, it can do some uh, like some simulation uh, and the other like. Uh, uh, robotics management, yeah, this is in the cloud. Yes, in the edge, edge node, uh, robotics, uh, robotics at, at is edge node. Yes, in the edge node, we uh, can run some uh, application in the robotic, yeah. Okay, uh, next I will introduce some respective uh, use cases of the KubeH community. Okay, you can see uh, this is some um, use cases of KubeH community. Uh, uh, we have uh, many use cases across uh, many industries like the intelligent transportation and the smart energy and the industry intelligent like smart CDN, cloud native vehicle, and the satellite and the smart campus, and the financial and smart logistics, chemical plant and uh, 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 many other industries. Yeah. Okay, next I will uh, introduce some <coughs> details of use cases. Okay, first one is the uh, satellite use case. From the uh, ar architecture, you can see uh, above is the satellite in the space. Yeah, satellite as a H node. Yes, it connects to the ground control center through the uh, ground station. Yeah, so we can control the uh, uh, H node in the sky from the ground. They can uh, deploy some uh, application or do some uh, uh, joint AR reference uh, and so on. Yeah, it also deploy our sub project like Sedna yeah, to do the uh, cloud edge joint uh, inference. Yeah. Okay, with the cube edge, uh, so the satellite to ground data transmission value is reduced by. Uh, uh, Ninety percent. Yeah. Also have some other benefits. Yeah. 
Yeah, another use case is about the uh, offshore oil field. You can see from the uh, architecture uh, in the sea, there are many edge node and edge devices need to uh, manage. Yeah, our user, users uh, use cube edge uh, for uh, uh, manage all these uh, sensor like a camera at edge node from the uh, central platform. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the uh, network between the edge node and the, uh, and the uh, central platform is uh, like some wireless network and optical transmission network is always unstable. Yeah, but use cube edge, we can ensure the uh, con uh, control command or other data other data can send to the edge uh, at the cloud uh, re reliable. Yeah. Uh, this is another uh, use case also very interesting. Yes, you can see uh, from the right side is the uh, architecture in the real world. Uh, you can see it has a camera uh, and uh, uh, road side unit and the edge node cloud. Yes, uh, in this case is the first the camera will monitor the inter intersection and then send the uh, some uh, like video pictures to the edge node then each node will do some processing and analysis. Uh, yeah. Then uh, after some analysis, it will uh, send the result to the vehicle or people uh, through the roadside unit, yes. Yeah, in this use cases, Cube Edge can uh, manage the uh, edge node from cloud, can also manage like the uh, roadside unit and the cameras, yes, all, yes, all managed by Cube Edge. Okay, this is uh, another uh, use cases. Okay, next I will introduce some about the community because KubeAge is an open source community. Yeah, this is some um, uh, open governance policies of KubeAge. Yes, we have the uh, technical steering committee uh, in the uh, community. Yes, and some other sub committee and the special teams. We do some project level governance and the SIG six life cycle and leadership management and do some other uh, project level policies. Yes, we also have some six like the in Kubernetes, yeah, six or focused on some areas like the uh, node device IoT networking scalability yeah, and so on. Yeah, we ho always have some uh, sub project yeah, like the Sedana, HMesh, Kubrob I, I, I described. Okay. Next, uh, this is some um, uh, partners of the KubeAge community. Yes, we have many uh, partners and adopters from the community all over the world. Okay. Okay, the next page is about the, uh, the whole age computing platform uh, about KubeAge. From the uh, above to the uh, below, you can see the above is the uh, industry scenario based kit. Yeah, we do some kit based on the like AI, IoT, MEC and robotics. Yes, we have uh, built some sub projects like the uh, Sedona Edge Mesh and so on. At the middle is the core frameworks in Kubernetes, like the schedule and the edge node management, yes, networking, yes, and so on. The below is the uh, hardware and uh, OS Kubernetes supported now. Uh, from architecture, you can see KubeAge can run all the uh, Linux, Windows, uh, Android, and some other uh, servers. Yeah. Ah, this is the uh, overview of KubeAge platform. Okay, that's all. Uh, welcome uh, to join the uh, KubeAge community and to uh, make the cloud native workload to run in more industries. Okay, thank you. Hello, do you have any questions? Okay, well, if you have any questions, you can go to the Coupage booth to discuss with me. Okay, thank you.